So I'm in Linxiang in Shandong province. Anyone been here? Nope, didn't think so. Today I'm going to have a look around. Uh, it's a little town on the Grand Canal. There's a few things here I want to have a look at. Starting with a beautiful Ming Dynasty pagoda. The Relic Pagoda was built during the Ming Dynasty in 1611. Although not a lot of travellers do make it out to Linxing, Brits have been here before. This is a drawing of the pagoda from 1793 by William Alexander, artist on the famous or perhaps infamous McCartney mission to China. All right, we can actually go inside this one, so um, let's have a look. Let's go. Very dark and narrow. If you can see that. Fifth floor. So this is called the Shirley Bauta, the um the relic pagoda. There's a lot of pagodas with a similar name in China. The relic they refer to, Shilidza, they're called in Chinese, are relics of the Buddha. Bits of finger bone and stuff like that. It's kind of weird. I wonder how many fingers the Buddha had. This is the top. Let's see if I can get a little peek out. Through all the red. It's a very misty day today though guys, so you might not be able to see much. That by the way, is the Grand Canal. And that doesn't look very grand. <laughs> um, it's not much of a river up here, to be honest. It's mostly dry, kind of a shadow of its former self. Further south, though, where we're heading, that's where it's still the real deal. So there's a large uh, Hui Muslim community here. And there's a couple of mosques which date from the Ming Dynasty. This is one of them, it's the North Mosque. Um, all along the Grand Canal, there were really big Muslim populations and they still exist today. Um, drawn by, you know, business, trade, work opportunities. So further out west, like when you get to places like Ningxia and Xinjiang, the mosques look more Middle Eastern. And the architecture is far more, far more Middle Eastern. Further east in China, um, even in Xi'an, and especially over here, like near the East Coast, the mosques and the architecture is very, very, very Chinese, just with some slight modifications to make it fit with Islam. Traditionally, temples in China are north-south. Uh, on a north-south axis, obviously, these mosques are all on east-west axis to uh, face Mecca. Interesting place. This whole area just uh, came down in the car. I'm gonna have a walk around now. It's really like buzzing, vibrant, um, quite Muslim community. Heaps of good food, I'm sure. Um, anyway, the other mosque, well, the one behind me I just went to now is right down the street. I'm not entirely sure if I can get in. Let's have a look. Deserted. There's absolutely no one here. I am, um, it's not a tourist place, as you can probably tell. I met a lad at the Pagoda. Um, he was from here. He was studying in university in Liaocheng, where I'm staying. So like 20 years old. 
He said I was the first foreigner he'd ever seen here in his life. <laughs> That's it. That's what we do on this channel. This is the main hall. It's also Ming Dynasty. There are like three or four mosques in this very, very small area. So obviously quite a large Muslim community in this town, which is also not a big town, by the way. It's famous for a few things in the past, though. Um, the tiles that were used on the Forbidden City in the Ming Dynasty that you go and see today when you go to Beijing were produced in this town. There you are. That's my lynching fact for you. That's it, I'm out. I've got nothing else. <laughs> Getting some pretty weird looks walking around here with the camera or without, so might as well go with the camera here. There's another mosque there, but it's for ladies, so I guess I can't go in. Never mind. All right, let's keep rocking. Reminds me a bit of um, some of the old back streets of Xi'an's Muslim Quarter. There are like 10 shops there all just selling sellotape. Who needs that much sellotape? I wonder. This little river, frozen river down here, was also uh, part of the Grand Canal system, believe it or not. Like I say, you know, the further you get down south, the, uh, the wider the canal is, and it's obviously still navigable in the south. It's still used. Um, further up north, especially this part, it is largely dried up or um, it's dried up to the point that it can't really be used anymore. So this was actually part of the Yuan Dynasty canal, which was um, later abandoned in the Ming Dynasty. This is one of the locks. <clears throat> For those of you who know anything about canals, in the UK we've got canals everywhere obviously. Um, pound lock, which is used on basically all canals, all over the world was invented in China in the Song Dynasty um, for the Grand Canal, you know, just some very, very smart engineer creating something no one had ever done before, which then started to appear in Europe around uh, a couple of hundred years after that. But yeah, it all started right here. We got something Taoist over here. Let's have a look. Interesting. Well, our map says it's a, an old temple to the Medicine King. Closed though, I guess everyone's healthy, we're all good. Let's, let's keep going, let's keep going. Don't know where I'm going, no idea. <laughs> And here we are on the on the actual Grand Canal. Frozen over and not very big, but it is the Grand Canal. This uh, this town, Linqing, it's called, um, was quite an important point on the Grand Canal. It's where actually two of the sections of the Grand Canal meet. So the Southern Canal, which comes down from Tianjin, uh, ends here, and the Shandong Canal begins, uh, which goes all the way down to. I believe down to uh, just south of Jining, to uh, to the lakes there. Having quite a nice time, you know. Uh, I quite like coming to these little towns that no one else ever comes to. Um, they often have a little bit of character about them. I know where I'm going. Don't worry. <laughs> so this was the site of the old uh, customs office on the canal. It was one of eight along the canal from Hangzhou, and it was the, uh, the one that made the most money. I just got told that this guy looks like me. I think it's Matteo Ricci, the uh, Italian Jesuit missionary. So the buildings are Ming Dynasty. They were built under the Xuanda Emperor's time, and uh, it was used for 600 years. It only um, became inactive in 1930. This is um, Lin Qing's premier tourist site, by the way. Um, when I came in, one of the girls who worked here kind of called me and was like, let's make a video. So she was showing me around and filming for 
who knows, Douyin. I don't know. It's quite fun. She was cute. <laughs> All right, and I think that's going to wrap it up today. The journey then continues south. We'll be in Shandong for a little bit longer, and then moving into the province of Jiangsu. And finally, Zhejiang. Can't wait. Can't wait for some warm weather. This is damn cold. Right, until next time, guys. See you later. All the best, and take care. Bye.